Hi everyone, welcome back to Game Maker Cast. It's Mickey, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at sliders. You can see I have a program in front of me that we're going to be generating here. And if I move the music slider up and down, you should hear the music come on. And I have a couple buttons that right now, if I click them, nothing happens. But if I turn the sound effects slider up, you should be able to hear those clicks. So let's close this and roll the intro and get right into the coding. So in my project here, I have a couple things already set up. If I open up the settings object and in the create event, you can see I have two global variables, the music and sound volume. So this just means that we can use these two variables in different rooms without having to refer to this object. I have a music object and in the create event, we're just playing some music here. And then I have the buttons, which is going to play the sounds. In my room main, I have the two buttons and the music. And then in the room in it, I have my settings object there, which will switch the rooms. So if I run this project here, we should hear the music and we should hear the buttons when I click on them. So that is what we're going to start off with. I'm going to go to the music one and I'm just going to comment that out. So when we run the program, we're not going to be hearing the music every single time. Okay, so let's go ahead and create an object and let's just call this one object slider. I'm going to make sure that I use the bar sprite. And one thing to, one thing to talk about here is the bar sprite, the origin is set to middle left. I normally have it set to the middle center, but to keep the math a little bit easier, we're going to set it to the middle left. So you don't have to worry about taking away half the sprite. Back in the object slider, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have some user feedback when they hover over the slider. So we're going to have a create event and two more events, one for the mouse enter and one for the mouse leave. So in the create event, let's create a variable called cursor and set it to CR underscore none. And this is going to be the cursor that we're going to be hanging on to while the person has hovered over our slider. So in here, in the mouse enter, we'll set our cursor variable to the window underscore get cursor. So this will grab whatever is default. So right now, mine is set to the point pointer. You may have something else like as the type button, who knows, but it will grab the default one and set it into this variable. Next, we need to set the cursor. So we'll use window set cursor, and we want to set it to CR underscore hand points. So that will change it into the hand which will let our users know that we're able to click on this particular item. Now, when they leave the slider, we need to switch it back to the cursor variable that we stored. So this will change it back to the default. In the main, let's go in and let's add two sliders here and here. And when I hit F5, let's see if our cursor now works. If I hover over it, you can see we go to the hand. And when I uh, hover off of it, we go back to the default one. So that is step one. If we close this, now we're gonna be working on the actual knob. So the thing that we can drag up and down. We're gonna have a bunch of different variables. So stay with me here. We'll have an amount underscore max, which is 100. So this will be your percentage. An amount underscore current equals zero. Uh, we also wanna make sure that we have a variable is being dragged. And we'll set that default. So this will tell us whether or not we're able to drag the knob up and down. Now, let's see here. We want to go to the draw event. So let's create a new event for draw. And in here, this is where we're going to handle all the drawing of the sprite, or sorry, all the drawing of the bar and also the knob. So we could either say draw self, which would draw whatever sprite is associated over here, or we could specify by saying draw sprite and either passing in the sprite name However, because I've specified it over here, I'll just use the sprite underscore index at the image index, which is the frame we're on, and the X and Y position, which is where we set it up in our room. So if I do this right now, we're left with what we had before, which is just the bar. So the next thing I wanna do is I need to figure out where to draw the knob. So in the create event, we had the amount current at zero. Let's change this something to like 60. So this would be 60% of 100. Instead of the draw event, we need two variables. We'll need a variable for the knob amount, which is just gonna be whatever our current amount is divided by the amount maximum. So that will give us a fraction. So right now it's set to 60. So our fraction will be 0.6. 
The next thing we need to do is figure out what is going to be whatever the result of this is. In our case, it's six. 60, uh, we need to figure out 60% of the sprite width. So we could say our knob position X is going to be equal to our current X position. So that's where we place the sprite plus our sprite and we'll scroll width divided by, sorry, not divided by, times the knob amount. And we're using times here because this knob amount is going to be 0 0.6 or it could be 1. So this will give us our actual how many pixels we need to move to the right. Now, if we just say draw sprite, and we draw the SPR knob at the image index of zero, we're going to use the knob position of X and the current Y position. So right now we've set all of our sliders to 60. If I hit F5, this should be on the 60%. So right now you can see that the knob is on 60. However, I cannot drag it back and forth. So to get this working, we're going to add a couple more events. So we're going to add a mouse event for mouse press. We also need a global mouse event for uh, left release when we actually let go of the button itself. So in the left pressed, let me copy the is being dragged variable here. We're going to change this to say true. And when we release the mouse button, we're going to change the is being dragged to false. So we're just toggling the flag on and off. Now we're going to create a step event and we're going to check to see if is being dragged is set to true. So if is being dragged is set to true, then we want to do a little bit of more math. And here we need to figure out the amount that we have dragged from the start of our sprite to wherever our mouse is. So we could say the XX position is going to be the X position of our sprite minus the mouse X position. So if I load up my room, if our sprite starts, let's see if I can get something here. Our sprite starts at roughly 100, and I drag this way to 63, then that XX uh, amount will be 63 pixels. So now that we know that, the one thing to keep in mind is if I'm dragging to the left, and I drag over here, and I get to um, 50, we're going to have a negative number. So we need to make sure that we're always working with a positive number. So we can use the absolute value, which is a default function in GameMaker. And this will always give us uh, positive numbers. So now that we have the amount that we're going to be dragging, we need to just say VR amount is going to be the drag amount divided by the sprite width. And so that will give us a number between zero and one. And then we need to make sure that we clamp this because we could have a negative number or sorry, we'd have a number bigger than one. So I say amount zero and one. So it's, it can't go any lower than one and it can't go any higher. So any lower than zero or any higher than one. Next, we want to set the amount current, which is a variable to whatever our amount is times a hundred. So if we run this, we'll run into one small problem, but we'll fix that in one second. Now, if I click, you can see that I can drag this and I can come over here and I can come over to the left. Now the problem exists where over to the right works, but if I come over to the left and I'm still dragging, because we're using the absolute value, you can see that we are dragging too far over and the scroll bar is going the opposite way. To fix this, all we have to do is check the mouse position to see if it's less than the X position, which is the last part of our slider here. So before we do any code, we can say if our mouse X is bigger than the X position, then we want to make sure that we calculate everything here. Otherwise, we'll just set the amount current to zero. So if I drag all the way to the left, the amount current is going to be automatically set to zero, and we can't go any further. If I drag all the way to the right, well, we are clamping it between zero and one, so that's why we can't go any further than that. Now, the only little bit of feedback that we need here is in the sprite itself. We have a regular sprite, and then we have a sprite that we've clicked on, so frame zero and frame one. In the actual slider object, we are using a variable called is being dragged, which is a true or false value. True or false then gets replaced with a one or zero. So that means that because the way that we have our sprite set up is being dragged, the first frame is zero. And then if is being dragged is set to true, which the second frame one would be our is being dragged frame, we can use that Boolean on our actual draw call. 
So in here, instead of saying draw sprite knob at the index of zero, we want to just use that Boolean flag. So if we hit F5 now, we should be able to click and get some user feedback. And then when we click off, we get uh, we go back to the regular state. Now, the last thing we want to do is hook these up to some of those global settings. So this is going to be a, a little bit difficult, but stay with me here. In the slider, we're going to have a new variable and we're going to set this variable name to settings or just let's just use setting for now. And then we're going to set the type to a list. Make sure we click the gear icon and we're going to add two different things right now. The very first thing we're going to add is music and then we will add one for sound. By default, it's going to set it as music or you can set it as sound. I'll leave mine as music. So I'll close the variable definitions and I'm going to go to my room main. And in here, if I double click on my first guy here and I go to variables, I can change this by clicking the pencil icon and changing it to sound. So right now we have, oops, sorry, we have a sound one and then we have our default one which is set to music and i'll just click that so for sure it's always going to be music now what we can do is in the create event we can instead of saying the amount current is set to 60 we could check to see what those global variables are and we could set the amounts based off of those variables so we'll just set the amount current to zero and i'll just say switch setting so this is going to check that variable definition which is right in here it's going to either be music or it's going to be sound so i could say case music and then break and i'll have one make sure i spelled music right i'll have one for sound now in here if the uh, case is music then i'll say the amount underscore current equals the global variable dot music sound. Otherwise, we're going to use not music, but we will use the sound volume. Now, if everything is set up, we should see different amounts here unless we get the random numbers exactly the same. And you can see that we do get those two different amounts. Now, I'm going to unpause, or I'm going to actually play the music here so we can actually get some stuff going here. Now that we have some music going, the only thing we need to do is change these two sound volumes when we left click off. So this is going to be within our global left click. Once again, we're going to be checking the setting on the particular instance. So we can use another switch statement to say switch based on setting. And we will check for music. And we will also check for sound. Now for the music, because we only have one, we could just say the global dot music volume equals the amount current in case we wanted to save it somewhere in an INI file or something. And then we could set our audio gain, sorry, audio sound underscore gain. And we want to set the track of music and we're going to set the current amount, which is zero to hundred. So we're going to divide it by hundred, which will make it zero to one, which is what this function expects. And we want the milliseconds in time to be zero. So this will be instantaneous. So if I hit a five, let's see how we did. Now we can hear the music. If I turn this down, the music goes away. If I turn that down, it doesn't really matter. And I can turn this up and you can hear the music has come back. So the only other thing we need to do is we need to set the button clicks as well. So we can copy and paste this code in. Now, the one thing that we need to talk about right now is we have two different sound for, sorry, two different clicks. We have the regular one, and then we have the click two. So we could do it like this, where this is definitely going to work. So I can turn this music all the way down and the sound all the way down, and I can't really click anymore. However, what's going to happen is if you have a lot of different sounds, then you're going to end up kind of putting all of your sounds in this code and it's just, it's not really going to work. So we're going to go up to tools and we're going to say audio groups. And in here, we're going to create a new audio group. And you can see we're going to use the group on all of our exports and we can rename this one. So let's just name this one audio group. I can't spell, but audio group. SFX or sound effects. And I want to add our resources. So I want to add the click and the click too. So now that we've done that, if we take a look at the default one, you can see that only music is in here, but now we have another one for sound effects. 
Now, what's going to happen is if we hit play right now, GameMaker is going to complain because our sounds aren't actually loaded. So we have to tell GameMaker to load our sounds. And you would probably do this in the settings um, variable just so it would load up all the sounds you need. But I'm going to have it inside here. So I'm going to use a audio group load function, and I'm going to pass in the name that we gave it, which is the audio uh, group sound effects here. So once this is loaded, what that means is I can come over to my global left press, and instead of doing the set gain for each individual one, I could do an audio underscore group and use a set gain where I set the entire group to whatever the amount current is, divide it by 100 and make sure it is instantaneous for zero milliseconds. So if I hit a five, let's see if we get any errors. And I can see, I'll turn down the music here, but I can see that the audio group one is loaded. So if I click my buttons, you can see that they're working. And if I turn my sound all the way down, you can see that once again, the buttons have been muted. So hopefully you're able to implement the sliders into your games and you can start working on some settings on your own. Thanks for watching. Today's video is accompanied by the F1 2019 Anniversary Edition. Use the link in the video to grab your key. First come, first serve. Thanks again for watching.